why are you doing this podcast today I have no idea. <laughs> I knew that B by Seps has uh, extended an invitation, uh, and I said yes. Um, I know that this is a very cleverly posed question, so that I can say I'm such a big fan. Uh, no, not at of all. Of course, it is. He's lying. <laughs> Everything he says is not true. Um, Look at this face. You think this face could lie? Listen, I've been in the acting business. I know a hustler when I see one. Huh. <laughs> Pardon me for saying this. No. Say it straight up, okay? I get a lot of Durga Mata energy. <laughs> <from you. laughs> it's the painting. It's not me. <laughs> He like there's like a Mata or something in front of me. <laughs> See, I told you the Mata problem will happen. <laughs> another epic episode of TRS. Another political episode of TRS. This time with a legend, Smriti Irani ji. This is also slightly different episode of TRS because we shot it in two parts. One part was shot in her office. we saw the work and career oriented version of smriti ma'am and then one part was shot at home where we saw the family oriented motherhood oriented homemaker version of smriti ma'am you're going to enjoy this one with all my political podcasts my intention is almost always to bring out the human side of the politician that we're speaking with and i have come to realize that there's a lot to learn from the life and perspectives of the human mind of politicians you'll understand what i mean when you watch the entire episode today lots more episodes with other politicians are going to be coming up thanks to trs's collaboration with my gov india so make sure you follow them and make sure you enjoy today's incredibly special episode with shri smriti irani My first political podcast. <laughs> How are you? This is an now? easy one. <laughs> you don't have a neta neta. You have somebody who's been in media, so can accommodate a youngster from media. <laughs> blessings, blessings, blessings. I know. Are you a blessed person? I am. Why are you a blessed person? I was born in the national capital in 1976, just after the emergency. Uh, father from a Congress establishment, mother who's in Sanghi. So you can imagine how volatile that situation must have been. Why did they get married? But I have no <laughs> idea, and uh, that is a question I often ask them. But um, I was born uh, to a parent who had a hundred and fifty bucks, and uh, we are seated uh, seated here today at a ministry office. Uh, I was born exactly what ten kilometers from here mm. in a government hospital. Did you have political ambition? No, no, not when I was in the government hospital in seventy <laughs> six. Um, and uh, my parents' their first housing quarters was a room above at the Bela, which is another fifteen kilometers from here. So I think the, uh, the journey of these fifteen kilometers has been stupendous and would not be possible if not for blessings. Did you have political ambition? No, never. I only had one ambition that whatever I do, I'll be the best at it. I I hate bringing this up. But when I saw you as like Tulsi on screen as a yeah. kid, <laughs> uh, I felt very safe looking at you. Which is good, which is what I intended. Yeah. I remember when I began the project, I had absolutely zero money. Uh, mm. Newly uh, married, not even twenty, thirty thousand bucks in the bank, and uh, I had borrowed money from a bank to buy a home. Um, it doesn't sound very flashy right now but it was around 25 27 lakhs mm. and uh, i remember i could just about scrape by to give the down payment for the house and um, i remember somebody walking into my set one day offering me an ad for a pan masala and that money was exactly 10 times the amount that i owed the bank i refused the ad and people looked at me as though i've gone absolutely crazy they like mad you need the money and i knew that there were families watching youngsters watching i said can you imagine somebody who's trying to make them feel as though you are a part of a family suddenly selling pan masala so i said no conscientiously uh, said no to all those so called waters that are flavored waters sold by alcohol companies mm. so they have been conscientious decisions about my media journey uh and that specially because i knew kids were watching so i'm happy as as a adult 
today to hear a youngster say that as a child i made him feel safe yeah um you did uh i have to it is not great for my age though because i do i'm 47 now and i have people who are like 60 years old with absolutely white hair saying maine bachpan mein aapko dekha tha <laughs> and i have to correct them that bhai sab wo jo aapne dekha tha wo 80 saal ki ulu thi na wo that was just makeup but it's nice uh, to be counted as family for so many people yeah uh honestly that that did play a role in your initial political career at no, least no it didn't It, it didn't? didn't absolutely not i mean you you gave me i was love very clear politically and i was clear in the media as well that i will never use my attire my persona as to see no dialogues from any political stage uh no uh, interventions in my tulsi avatar to ask for votes so if you look at uh, my political landscape you will never find a video where i'm giving dialogues from my show or where i'm wearing the tulsi costume to go and ask for votes you will never find not a single one that, it was a very very conscious decision that too okay why are you doing this podcast today i have no idea <laughs> i knew that bby seps has uh, extended an invitation uh, and i said yes um i know that this is a very cleverly posed question so that i can say i'm such a big fan uh, no not at of all of course it is he's lying <laughs> everything he says is not true um, look at this face you think this face could lie listen i've been in the acting business i know a hustler when i see one ha huh. so um we've had many chocolate looking heroes who have lied through their teeth so don't get me there but uh, no for me it's an opportunity to converse because it is important that every segment of communication is leveraged yeah. and i'm using that word very judiciously leveraged so that people can make up their own minds yeah. for me i'm here to learn today from you and that's why i'm really glad it's you who's first i always find it easier to talk to get anyone get back by somebody you know <laughs> <laughs> no no i find it i find it easier to talk to someone who has some sort of past in media I think you, that you get this vibe you have a history of uh creating conversations where you take a position of learning i have seen you use that statement with many people yeah but isn't it how it should be especially when this format this with podcasting this is how it is not so uh, that is why possibly podcasts like yours are a bit refreshing because you do meet a lot of people and it's it's a very natural progression when you have a wealth of information then you do have people who tend to say listen i know better mm. and that's a very natural human psychological yeah. impact of uh, gathering a lot of knowledge so it's nice to have somebody who's a great listener i mean you are a good talker that's why the podcast or video cast is very successful but what is uh, i think one of the greatest advantages of engagement with you is that you're a good listener Thank you. I'm tell my girlfriend. No, I'm, Which I'm, one? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, no. I have to begin this conversation. We haven't begun it yet. But just a simple, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm. Uh, I won't say I'm nervous. I am confident. I'm very positive about Why this. Why whole... would you be nervous? I think people are telling me to be nervous. Why? While, while talking to people like no, you, no, people guys. say a thousand things. But why is it that it has impacted you personally? Maybe just the novelty of it, like it's a new thing talking to politicians, especially those who and are. And I in think power. that is the one thing that should not be a novelty. You elect or do not choose to elect people to office, but that should not stop the conversation. You may or may not agree with somebody's political ideological position, but that should not stop conversation. And I think that is one of the greatest challenges today. Two people who disagree need to disagree respectfully. Sit mm. down, listen to each other. Okay. You headed the Ministry of Education for some time. Yep. I want to ask you two questions. One, what's your learnings from that phase of your life? What went on when? Because I'm sure when you're heading that ministry. you get to see it from a top down view and things get revealed to you yeah yeah second question the big complaint that most viewers have is that we're taught parts of history in our history textbooks and not the kind of history that we should be taught which would instill pride as indians yeah i totally so, agree with the second part okay but let me give you the process sure. i'm sorry it'll sound a bit boring no no go for it you have to have the national curriculum framework right which tells every state and sets the national tone for how curriculum is to be written hmm. that curriculum framework cannot be administratively constitutionally be established till you change the national policy okay our education policy was not changed for four decades 40 years nobody touched it 
स्टूडेंट्स यूज टू कंप्लेन अरे यार दुनिया कहाँ दौड़ रही है हम क्या पढ़ रहे हैं द रीजन फॉर इट वॉज दैट टिल यू डोंट चेंज पॉलिसी नो बडी कैन चेंज करिकुलम बाय लॉ सो वेन आई बिकेम मिनिस्टर एजुकेशन आई सेड और कुछ भी कर रहा है पहले पॉलिसी देखो पॉलिसी कैसे बदलोगे ना हमारे देश में 40 साल पहले पॉलिसी कैसे बनी थी टेन गाइज फ्रॉम अकेडमी सैड टेन बाबू सैड दे मेड द पॉलिसी and we had never had an outreach to people who are affected students parents colleges universities and ask them aapko kya chahiye so i decided and i requested the prime minister i said sir he said how will you manage as i'll digitally leverage support also so my gov we use them i reached out to 2 lakh village education councils in our country people didn't know they existed hmm then in every district of our country we asked every university every college we asked parent teacher organization student communities unicef un women bhi pooch liya sabse pooch liya jo purane shiksha mantri the unko bhi likh likh ke bula bula ke sir aapko kuch bolna hai kya sare mps jitne bhi rajnitik dal ke mp hai yani sir bjp wale ko phone sabko poocha likh ke kya aap bataiye everybody contributed to the new education policy once that is established then your curriculum comes then the changes that you are talking about are going to be made how long do you think this will take that uh, policy came 2020 and it will gradually happen over the next no, decade now it is already the curriculum framework is already at work for instance in anganwadi which i am responsible for i just 2 uh, 3 weeks back announced a portion bhi padhai bhi okay. scheme where what we have done is kids under the age of 6 उनको क्या पढ़ाना है इट्स वेरी नॉट एक्सट हैवी राइट दे वॉन्ट टू लर्न फ्रॉम गेम्स दे वॉन्ट टू लर्न फ्रॉम क्ले दे वॉन्ट टू लर्न फ्रॉम सॉन्ग्स दे वॉन्ट टू लर्न बाई ड्रॉइंग पिक्चर्स सो वी हैव ब्रॉट टूगेदर फ्रॉम ऑल स्टेट्स ऑल सॉन्ग्स ऑल लर्निंग्स शेयर डेट विद एवरीबडी एंड वी सेट डू इट एन मदर टंग सम किड हु स्पीकिंग लेट्स ए ट्राइबल बेस्ड डायलैक्ट you can't expect them to uh, suddenly learn uh, baba black sheep right so i have said customize it to the local needs of the community of the family of the child and then because uh, if i had said this ki agar aap matra bhasha mein padhayenge to acha hoga nobody would believe me right they would have said tum you are very regressive hmm. but if you look at international study every time a child is taught maths and science in their mother tongue foundational education they remember it for life I have seen kids, and I keep calling them kids. I have a twenty-one-year-old son. I have seen students from colleges like SRCC in Delhi, from IITs and IIMs leave because they have had their early education in Hindi, and they cannot come up to speed with the English courses being taught. And that is why, if you look at the national education policy, it talks about even higher education in the mother tongue. Why? Why should people miss out on opportunities just because they can't speak? Because. You worked with PM Modi for this long now. What does the press and the public not know about him as a That person? That anybody who comes and claims to you, they're very close and they've seen him up close and all crap. <laughs> no, but when you work together, some sort of deeper character reveals. No, like I said, people who actually work very closely with him for the past twenty-five years that I've known all of them, you have never seen them in the press. Okay, gotcha. All right. There is not a single human being, and I know of his team, which has been with him through some of the best and the worst of times, especially what, the worst of times. What have you picked up from him as a professional? What have I picked up from him as a person? Or professional? No, and I'll tell you as a person. I I don't remember. This is Minister Education. All right, my kid collapsed. My son collapsed. There was this controversy playing out in Parliament. Atal Bihari Vajpayee is born on the twenty fifth of December, hmm. right? So on twenty fifth of December is Good Governance Day. So I said, whoever is wherever, any kid can write a good uh, essay, and we'll give them a prize. It's a no brainer. So who's the one kid who's in a hostel? It's a Navode Vidyalay, which is a hostel, which is obviously functional twenty four seven. There is no government holiday there. There's a big hangama in Parliament. It's ne Christmas badal diya. I'm like, what? इसने क्रिसमस की छुट्टियां हटा दी मैंने कहा व्हेन डिड दैट हैपन एंड माय किड्स आर कॉलिंग व्हाट हैव यू डन आई लाइक आई हैव नॉट डन एनीथिंग इन द मिड्स ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दैट आई एम रनिंग बिटवीन यू नो पार्लियामेंट माय सन कोलैप्सेस इज इन 10th स्टैंडर्ड एंड आई दैट वाज माय फर्स्ट ईयर एज अ पॉलिटिशियन इन दिल्ली आई डिडंट नो व्हाट टू डू पिक्ड हिम अप रैन टू एम्स एंड आई हैड आंसर्स टू गिव इन पार्लियामेंट द नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग 
I had this controversy which was raging and I just didn't know what to do. And when you are, you know, when your baby just, I mean, in standard, but still, when your kid collapses, it's like your world comes crashing down. In the midst of all that mayhem, your boss calls. Kya hua? And like, my kid collapsed. Can you imagine having that conversation with uh, Prime Minister Modi? I'm like, my baby just collapsed. He says, just everybody calm down, look after your kid and tell me what you need. So I ran between Ames, Delhi and Parliament for the next seven days with my kid in hospital. But my boss was like, what help do you need? You need help at the hospital, you need help at work, you tell me. That is what makes him a person to die for. You go to war for such a man. I get to learn a lot and I get to see lots of different perspectives. Um, the kind of perspective I've got from the show and I try keeping a very centrist approach if we're ever doing a political conversation because that's just how I look at media. I think that you should be a centrist and keep, you should nitpick you should be both nothing. sides. You should be nothing, exactly. In fact, you should not be centrist, leftist or rightist. Uh, nothing, I feel the closest way to define nothing is centrist. That's Possibly. why I'm using the word Possibly. centrist. Uh, and I think it's the ethical thing to do as a media professional. Uh, what I do wish to ask you is about the other side. You're heading the Ministry for Minority Affairs now. Yes. Uh, and I think you're, you're the first practicing Hindu who's like headed it. Yes. You know the kind of criticism that comes your way. And I'll also represent a lot of my Muslim friends in Bombay itself or the people who've been on the show. Uh, their narrative has gone from being skeptical to bad to now, oh, geopolitically, yeah, the current government is good. So it's gone from being bad to... <laughs> Firstly, so, I think that you're in a constitutional position where you cannot afford to say that I can serve you only if you're from my community. I can serve you only if you're from my caste. Hmm. Which means I can serve you only if you're from my age bracket or my gender, which is absolutely hogwash. Hmm. So Mamta Banerjee being a Hindu was heading minorities ministry in her state. Yeah. It becomes a big issue when I am giving that responsibility. Oh, oh. My issue is, if you're truly a secular state, does not matter who's sitting yeah. in that position. Why don't you break it down in terms of what's the role of the Ministry for Minorities for a 30-year-old? See, year I honestly think that when this ministry was construed, thought of, at that time, the then Congress government felt that we religion ke liye alag se bana dete hain. But when Prime Minister Modi says that religion is not your If you're a poor you should get X, Y, Z. That is a much more cohesive and secular approach. Yeah. Now I have statement de diya. Somebody will take this, splice it and say Smriti Irani announces on Beer Biceps that she does not like the ministry. So that is a danger of having conversations freely and fairly. For instance, I am the minister in charge who has reduced the cost of Hajj. How so? Accommodation mein aap jab jate the hajj mein, aapko balti hajj committee se leni padti thi. Kyun? Chaddar hajj committee se leni padti thi. Kyun? Hmm. Mene ka balti chaddar kyun bech raha hai? Aapko apna cabin baggage bhi hajj committee ko paise deke lena padta tha. Free market se nahi le sakte. Wo kharcha hi musalman ko 50,000 rupi padta tha. So I told the Hajj से कहा कि आप क्यों जोर दे रहे हैं कि इसी brand का luggage लेना है यही brand की बाल्टी लेना है वो आपका काम नहीं है। Second, मुझे ये बोला गया कि भाई अब हम चाहते हैं कि जब हम वहाँ जाएं मक्का मदीना में तो X Y Z हमारा खर्चा होगा रहने के लिए। मैंने कहा कि अगर आप competitively इस खर्चे को देखें क्या ये खर्चा कम हो सकता है? वो खर्चा कम हो गया। so I think it doesn't matter which community I belong to. What matters is when I'm in this position, can I serve the interest of all communities well? What's your message to For minorities instance, abhi, watching this? For instance, no, I think Indians cannot be a minority in their own country. Firstly, hmm. I'm married to a Parsi and he's never pranced about being a minority. That I'm a minority. Every Parsi that you meet very proudly says I'm an Indian. Hmm. And that is the feeling I'd like every Indian to inculcate in themselves and their kids and their families. आप अपने देश में अपने लोगों को नहीं कह सकते कि भाई तुम अलग हो हीन भावना से ग्रस्त हो हम तुमसे बेहतर ऐसा नहीं हो सकता और उसको ना करने के लिए जरूरी है कि आप सबको बोलो कि भाई हम सब इक्वल हैं yeah. कुछ अनइक्वल इंटरवेंशन जैसे कांग्रेस पार्टी ने की बहुत सारी चीजों में मुस्लिम रिजर्वेशन कर दिया कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली वैलिड नहीं है लेकिन 
जब आप कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल उस गलती को सुधारते हो तो कांग्रेस पार्टी जाके मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी में कहती देखा ये लोग मुस्लिम विरोधी हैं मतलब आपने पहले कुछ किया जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली मैंडेटेड नहीं है फिर जब दुरुस्त किया गया तो आपने कहते देखा आप बीजेपी मुसलमानों के खिलाफ है डू यू थिंक द वे माइनॉरिटीज फील अबाउट द करंट गवर्नमेंट इज अ लॉट ड्यू टू एल्गोरिदम सोशल मीडिया कैंपेन्स मार्केटिंग यू नो आई एम ऑफ द बिलीफ दैट व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेरियस इंटरवेंशंस ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सारी इंटरवेंशंस पोरस टू द पोर की हैं पोरस टू द पोर में एससी एसटी कम्युनिटी आ गया माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटी आ गया तो जब आप कहते हैं कि किसी का आपके खिलाफ एक नजरिया है क्या वो नजरिया इसलिए क्योंकि वो डिनाइड अ राइट या क्या वो नजरिया इसलिए है बिकॉज यू बिकम अ पॉलिटिकल टूल फॉर समबडी इतना तो मैं धड़ल्ले से कह सकती हूँ दैट नो सिटीजन इन दिस कंट्री हैज बीन डिनाइड द फ्रूट्स ऑफ डेवलपमेंट फॉर इंस्टेंस नरेंद्र मोदी जब सड़क बनाते हैं तब कहते हैं कि सिर्फ बीजेपी वाले चल सकते हैं नहीं ना तब कहते हैं सिर्फ हिंदू चल सकता है जब नलके से पानी देते हैं तब कहते हैं कि नहीं मैं उसी घर में पानी दूंगा जहाँ से वोट आए डू दैट राइट ओके the one thing i've learned from my conversation with sanjeev sanya also is that infrastructure is one of the main focuses of pm modi himself but other than that what's the future looking like there's a lot no, of young I people watching us i think that this. that is an anomaly as in because to believe that modi is only about brick and mortar highway no, no, or one, infrastructure that one is one of his priorities it's one amongst many what, i think that if you look constitutionally what has he done right your country never had a lady from a poor tribal family becoming the president of india the supreme commander of the armed forces you have that in president draupadi murmu your country did not have a dalit community represented as president of india prime minister modi has done that your country is now a non permanent member of the security council hmm. yeah prime minister modi has done that your country apart from vaccines right we talk about everybody 160 countries what you saw in papua new guinea was what a reciprocation of the support we gave as a country during times where countries were falling apart or pulling at each other yeah so to limit prime minister modi to one segment But uh for co- instance collectively as a team what are you guys looking forward to the next 10 years that is the beauty of prime minister modi he says that there should not be a segment of community a segment of economy that should be waylaid look at everything is priority small let me give you a very small example right he has a program which is called atal tinkering lab all right none of the kids who go to that lab are voters in mm. 1000 such labs in 721 districts that's not a voter doesn't get talked about what do the kids go and do there if you have an innovation that you would like to support you can use that lab you use that lab for let's say pushing against what is an established engagement in a lab with regards to science now those are issues which don't make headlines they've been done right mm. okay got you uh that's it that's the end of the podcast thank i you. will end by saying two things firstly thank you for your time i respect you immensely thank even you. more so after researching about this podcast um so i really appreciate you speaking to me uh i will say that i think when we have a longer conversation in the future that will be a true podcast this was just sort of an ice breaker sarkari one <laughs> uh, this was a little more political than i wanted i want to bring out your human side honestly i didn't get we'll to we save it for my podcast yeah okay i didn't get to interject a lot here uh that's what happens when you talk to a politician we I, speak i hear you no no i i get it uh this wasn't the ideal podcast for me but i'm still deeply honored to have spoken to you uh i know that the youth of the country desperately wants to help governance so what we can do form. is reschedule part 2 after i'm done with the press okay all right okay ma'am we will do it uh thank you i wish you we all the best we can do luck. it at my house all thank right, you ma'am. so much thank you meant a lot that you spoke to us thank you ladies and gentlemen that was only the first half of this beautiful episode the second half is a lot more heartfelt it's a lot deeper and the conversationalist side of smriti ma'am came out in the second half so please watch till the end welcome back smriti ma'am thank you for having me back again on your show such a different energy around you from you when we're in your beautiful home uh this is like this is not my home this is the people's home but i think you're inhabiting this space i am given the space. privilege of living here because of people who voted for me are you a grizzly bear mom you know what a grizzly bear mom is i don't know but i presume that 
I might be one. Like very ferocious about protecting your kid. Yeah, but yeah, I think that that is the one thing that I have learned in my entire life. I'm a kid from a broken home. I I feel like fist bumping you, but I think oh really we can okay <laughs> we can. So my greatest um, learning or takeaway from that was I want my kids to know that I'll fight death to protect them. And I think that is the best feeling a kid can have. That you have a parent who will watch out and fight the world. I can literally go fight, go to the mattresses, as they say in The Godfather, for my kids. And expect nothing. How did Because it- I think that as a mother, the one blessing God has given me is that if, I kid, if my kid walks away from me, that's fine. Because they've been through too much. For me to ask too much of them from now onwards. So yeah. I can fight for them, but I can let them go. Um, I had this conversation with uh, Piyush sir a couple of days ago about the skill sets required for being a politician. The one thing I didn't touch upon with him was the whole people skills aspect of it. Because at its core, when you follow first principles thinking, politics is about winning over people. First, the masses. Politics is about more than winning over people. But I tell you why. This, sure. Because politicians, if this do so desire, can fool a certain number of people a certain amount of time. Got it. Why did you become a politician? Is a conversation every politician needs to have with themselves. Why did you become a politician? I wanted to change policy. Okay. I was the USAID ambassador to India on WHO. So what uh, popularly, uh, if I describe the aspect of that job is, you see, uh, you see conversations about the ORS goal with zinc. Mm. I was in the ambassador who introduced it to India. Okay. I was 23 years old. Huh. Okay. Now, when I was doing that, I was going to hospitals, government hospitals, Bihar, UP, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, I also, when I used to do Sadhvi Kabhi Bhavuthi, if I would do a big ad campaign, I would take some money out and do projects to build water systems for villages. The inception of this thought of you becoming a politician happened while the show was at its peak? I'll just give you the... um, So I'm doing all of this and I have a big politician in Maharashtra telling me, you can keep doing this your whole life. But if you want to do systemic change you have to become a politician and work hard enough to be a politician who can write policy Mm. he said because everything that happens in the country has to stem from two things either policy or law and for you to become a lawmaker that should be your penultimate goal if you truly are doing all this to bring about change and I think that Gentleman was Gopinath Munde. What he said made a lot of sense. Because I at 23 felt, I am doing everything. If someone has a help him. If someone has a water, I am helping him. And I was like, why is the system not responding? Hmm. He said, but you need people in the system who will make the system respond. By building policy or by building law. Not every politician is capable of coming up with good policies. True. That's that's a thing. It's true. But I would assume it's a very basic part of your skill no, set. No, no, no. Not really? at all. Not at all. And I'll tell you why. You've had a government before this, right? Hmm. So you can do a comp- comparative then and there. For instance, um, toilet is a big issue, right? That we are administratively addressing. Was toilet not an issue earlier? Hmm. It was never a part of any political manifesto. It was never a part of any political talk. In fact, it was not a talk which is glamorous enough to be had. But it's a very basic need of a woman. Mm. But no woman ever walked up to a politician and said, Mujhe toilet bana ke mm. These are conversations that were never had in our country. If you do a research, in 2013 you will find, and this has happened on... Uh, TV channels, IBN7, all these guys have done the debates, but everybody forgets 40% of sexual assaults 
against women were happening when they were going out to defecate in the morning or at night can you imagine mm. our country never had a menstrual hygiene administrative system in it why is it important people will say kya so let's imagine that you are a girl in a school your school has to provide you a sanitary pad was that a conversation earlier mm. when was the last you passed out of school i passed out of school in 94 it was never a conversation if it's a sarkari school that means i have to put up a sanitary pad ka machine uska matlab uska budget kahin se aayega mere akele ke school mein nahi hoga sabke school mein hoga वो बजट स्टेट से नहीं आएगा तो सेंटर से आएगा hmm. तो बजट एक बार आपने डाल दिया सैनिटरी पैड लगा दिया मशीन तो उसका डिस्पोजल कैसे होगा तो सरकार इज अ थिंग विच सेज अच्छा इफ एक्स हैज टू बी डन यू हैव टू लुक एट एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ हाउ दैट इश्यू इज टू बी डन सो इफ यू टॉक एट सैनिटरी पैड हाउ डू आई मेक इट अवेलेबल आई हैव टू मेक इट अवेलेबल सो दैट इट्स अफोर्डेबल राइट so today there is jan aushadhi kendra 9000 of them across the country and one buck sanitary pad is available across the country mm. but if i have to get it into a school i also have to have a disposal strategy so are you explaining policy making through this example yeah. okay this is but what goes in but if you are not conscientious of these aspects mm. would you make the policy then it's like product design from a very macro country level but you have to do it you talk in macro but i have to look at the mac- micro picture that fine maine uske haath mein sanitary pad 1 rupaye ka de bhi diya wo pakenge kahan pe hmm. empathy empathy and let, and it has uh, multiple layers of effect Got i'll tell you why you as a country are committed to environmental standards to be maintained hmm. can you have menstrual hygiene products just chucked all over the country in some corner no so when the prime minister gives a clarion call don't do single use plastic it is not only an international commitment for making sure that you are reaching sustainable development goals it is also to say that when you chuck plastic outside who is eating it stray mm. animals mm. got you and so it's a whole consciousness so when the prime minister says Let's do Swachh Bharat. Which prime minister has ever said this? But why are you saying it? If you inculcate a feeling that I need to keep my city clean, will I then attract more and more people in terms of investments or tourists? Yes. Will I have a civic sense which is ingrained into a generation? My generation has seen things chucked all over the place. Hmm. my kids generation is conscientious enough to say don't do this okay but can it be only that kid doing it what happens when it becomes a social network hmm then as a part of the social network you have people saying okay you have a problem disposing it can i use technology and give you an easier way or a more affordable way of disposing of this waste this is a most non glamorous conversation to have but it just tells you that as a politician or as a policy maker when i sit down i have to think through all of these layers mm. so to be a good politician only being a people pleaser is not enough okay first you have to decide why do you want to be a politician i was very clear i wanted to be a politician to make policy we built i had the privilege of building india's first moocs platform called swayam mm. but we built it when digital education was not the in thing right prime minister modi then said digital india and everybody said what is this nonsense from the opposition everybody attack kon karega hindustan mein digital payments today you can't imagine not paying digitally so like i said skill set one not only people pleaser you have to have passion for a thing or two in in the policy segment the third issue is you need to do things for your people way before they become a huge necessity or an emergency arrives that in time saves nine yes but there are many a times when you don't know what is to be stitched can you mm. preempt it you have conversations people of course that's how you figure oh this is what's wrong in their life no the issue is not only having conversations with people right the issue is you as a country 
have missed out on many a decades where you could have reached many a new um standards vis-a-vis -vis internationally how development is recognized like south korea did i would is like you can't do apples and oranges mm. i is an indian feel we are now at a time in our history globally or domestically where we've seen situations fail across the world we've seen what works across the world we are great adapters and i think one of the greatest opportunities where we learned about our own strengths was when covid came mm. yeah everybody who spoke and i still remember a conversation with a representative in uh, un women new york so a statement came out that in india 80% of women now will be getting beaten up at home because they're all indoors and i called that colleague in new york he said how do you make the statement i said give me empirical evidence why is it that you presume that 80% women in my country will get beaten up at home are you telling me that 80% men in marriages or partnerships in my country have nothing better to do but beat up their uh, female partner mm. no it is our projected fear i said <laughs> can you imagine doing this to your country and say oh i project a particular fear with no empirical evidence i said i would like you to withdraw that statement right now i can compute we had 35 helplines functional across the country the national commission for women's office was 24/7 operational state commissions were operational police was operational i said you find me one case where a woman says that i'm trying to reach out and there's nobody who wants to help i had fast track courts running i had victims under protection i had people in uh, women's homes that were functional children's homes that were functional we were monitoring all these establishments i said you sit there in new york and you pontificate about my country without empirical evidence yeah. i said it's very easy to be this um this kind of a feminist who say oh what cha cha hua hoga i said nonsense every man in my country is not a a female shamer or a wife beater or a rapist so i think as a politician like you said what are the skill sets the biggest skill set are you passionate about your country about your people because people pleasing is not the correct aptitude I, there say, are many a times you have to say no yeah, winning over people's hearts maybe not pleasing no really how, how do you yes, get them to follow you big you see a good leader takes you where you ought to be ah okay you change their life and therefore you, change, you have to bring in a system of for instance what did prime minister modi first say i have to reach out and give clean fuel to the poorest of the poor i can't afford to do it if some of you who have extra subsidies don't need it can give it up can mm. you give it up one crore people gave it up mm. yep. now as a politician he could have very well said are yaar jeet gaye bahut badi margin se historic ho gaya let you know let the games begin let everybody be happy he's taken very tough decisions yeah and if you're a part of his team you know he tells you okay don't do your politics so that you can get your 2 minutes of fame on a tv channel or mm. a newspaper if you have the capacity to withstand headwinds and do good by your people even if you get bad press just do it mm. and i think it's very rare to get such a boss if you are genuinely true to your people you have to be honest with them so as an amethi mp there are people who walk up to me and say ye ye kar dijiye कानून की मर्यादा के अंतर्गत नहीं है एंड आई सी अट आउट नो विल आई बी प्लीजिंग दोज पीपल दैट डे एब्सोलूटली नॉट बट एट लीस्ट माई पीपल नो दैट इफ यू रीच आउट टू योर एम पी विथ समथिंग विच इज लेजिटमेट शील गेट इट डन आस्ट अलॉर्ड पीपल फ्रॉम अलॉर्ड ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज दिस क्वेश्चन एंड आई लव टू नो डू थिंक हाउ बिग अ रोल डू यू थिंक डेस्टिनी luck circumstance um and maybe even karma all of it okay you think it plays a role Absolutely. in where you end up in life yep let's just talk about circumstance and destiny and maybe not karma here but uh there was a reason you met gopinath munde who put that thought in your head and therefore you went on this path one layer deep why do you think god has chosen your soul to do what god i have doing? no idea 
Yeah. And anybody who tells you they have an idea is lying. Do you think about this? No. You don't I question. I just say thank you. Sorry? I just say thank you. Okay. Because I believe that the fact that I have the opportunity is not an opportunity for me to question why. Okay. Fair enough. I would rather spend my energies to say thank you for giving me the opportunity and it's an opportunity which is anewed every day. Yeah. I have taken policy decision this morning which I hadn't taken last time we spoke. Have you played a sport in school? Of course, I was a sports captain. I remember, I, I remember something about basketball. Competitive from, yeah. from the very beginning. Right? Basketball, cycling, you, you judo remember? a little bit. But oh, yeah, my kids have outdone me on the martial arts. Oh, okay. They're third dan black belts okay. and record Let, holders. Let's talk judo and basketball because this, I mean, I'm a judoka myself and I've played a little basketball. You know, remember what Randori felt like fighting? <laughs> when when you're in a match, a judo match? Yeah. Your brain enters a state of intensity because you can take out the other person. I think your brain enters a state of, when you actually peak, and I this is my experience, others may differ from it. When you actually are at your peak uh, from a performance point of view, I go completely blank. Your body For just me, takes over. It, it just takes over mm. and you have to reach that goal. You just reach the goal. Okay. How often do you get called by people for favors? Or Nobody calls me for favors. Because anybody who knows me knows I will not go uh, out of the realms of law to accommodate and just and please anybody. Um, Which makes me a horrible person. What are you favor. I don't No. Mm. Because I am to work without fear or favor. That is my job constitutionally. Mm. I'm assuming that once you have a family and you have kids, loneliness ends. But if you don't have a family and kids I of your own. I think that's the biggest. Um, I will use this very, very word. Very, very. Misconception. Huh, misconception is a better word than crap. Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so you still, there is an aspect of you feeling lonely? I think that one of the biggest myths is that you can be surrounded in a crowd of people you love and not be lonely. I think uh, given uh, conversations today which oscillate between loneliness and depression, the huge difference about um, uh, between the word loneliness and wanting time for yourself. Solitude. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I can love my kids to death and not sit on their heads 24-7. But more give power... Give them that space and give myself that space. More power leaves you lonely? I think it's all melodrama. <laughs> it is. It is melodrama. Do you meditate? Absolutely. Okay. With uh, my, my son would possibly smile and say, ha ha, nonsense. But uh, yes. Like you I'd, sit for dhyana. Uh, I'm a very, very hyper human being. So to say that I'll sit every day as a practice would be a lie. But yes, I, I don't want to sound mumbo jumbo. Spiritually know exactly when to sit would be more accurate. Okay. Uh, I know exactly when my soul has to be fed. Yeah. Uh, I'm at a stage in my own meditation journey where my mentors have advised me stop. If they've said stop intellectualizing your meditation and just do the technique because you're con I'm constantly thinking about my businesses, my podcast, my own growth. I think that you just know when you need it. It's like fasting for the brain. You just know when you need it. You know when exactly when you need the silences, you know when you need the meditation, you know when you are in a crowd, but still you are you and just yep. there, not there. You know when you have completely consumed all the love that you're surrounded by. As an individual, if you have that state of awareness about yourself, you're set. That's the most beautiful realization in life. Um, what do you think of right before you fall asleep? And what do you think of Nothing. as your first thought in the morning? Nothing. Both. Blank. I think this is a great feeling. Uh, second last thought then. <laughs> before the nothingness Blank. begins. Blank. I, this is what everybody who meditates and is spiritually connected to aspires. It sounds again, like I said, mumbo jumbo. My entire life has been about my conversation with my God. Okay. 
एंड आई हैव नेवर बीन लेफ्ट अ लोन फॉर मी टू हैव मल्टीपल थाट्स अबाउट ये करना वो करना नो 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 वेन आई गो टू बेड थैंक यू गॉड इफ आई वेक अप टू मोरो थैंक यू गॉड वेक अप टू मोरो लुक एट द सन द फर्स्ट थिंग लुक एट द सन ब्यूटिफुल डे सम पार्ट ऑफ इट विल बी गुड सम पार्ट ऑफ इट विल बी बैड इट्स अ डे यूर अ लाइफ but it takes time to reach the stage of mental contentment that you um absolutely mm. i will not say that it's uh, something that happens very early on in life especially i have had a life which has been um a life full of opportunities but at the same time a lot of challenges mm. there have been challenges there have been controversies that i have dealt with publicly it hasn't been easy it is comparatively easy when it's only you and more difficult when it's your kids and somebody you love and i think that if i am to look at what i have done best in life it is to know how to adjust to loss to loss loss to loss <laughs> loss of friendships loss of relationships loss of people loss of um control in situations is all a part of life detachment i learned detachment mm i think chanakya has written i i forgot the exact name of the book it i think it was the chanakya niti where he's explained how you should be running a country it's like a guide book for politicians two questions one do you guys study chanakya's writings <laughs> and two there's a part of it that says that the final aspect of being a great politician or a leader is the detached. ability to give it up Yes. So, what does this mean? That you can walk away from all the power, from all the clout, from everything. everything. I've walked away before from a career. Mm. I have walked away from a media career when I was at my peak, not when my career had come to a standstill. So I know what it's like to walk away. Pardon me for saying this. No, say it straight up, okay? Say. I get a lot of Durga Mata energy. From you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the painting. It's not me. <laughs> He like does like a Mata or something in front of me. <laughs> See, I told you the Mata problem will happen. <laughs> no, I think I've been very lucky. I have been lucky from five perspectives. Let me say this: somebody I absolutely loved, who was the center of my life, and who gave me what I am today as a persona. Somebody who. help me read understand life uh, learn how to forgive that person died when i was 13 and for me i could not imagine living a life which did not respect his belief in me that is one second i always tell people that people see the rasmat as after sasvi kabhi bahuthi they see the power of the politician I have been at a place where I had two hundred bucks in my pocket. I have walked from Mahalakshmi Station to Famous Studio in absolute fever, only to be told how horrid an act I was, and gone back home and wondered the next day if I don't get a job, I am done. What will I do? I still remember that fear. the humiliation and i think it is important to remember it because it keeps you grounded no matter who you become in life and possibly a little motivated us no it teaches you how people value you if you were just you mm mm-hmm. <laughs> what is your value just as you it's nothing i remember when i had my first child I had to go back to work two days after giving birth because I had no money, and I went through a cycle where, when I was pregnant, I used to sit. If anybody has seen the Balaji old office, and if you remember, twenty years ago, whoever, it was a broken road. My my cameraman, my makeup artist used to come in cars. I used to come in auto, and they used to be scared. They used to say, "Arey, ma'am, आपको इतना बड़ा." You are pregnant heavily. You are coming. You will fall some day. Something will happen. You will go into a basement work and everything. You have the baby. Two days later, you know you have to come back to work. 
and you're alone because your husband has found a job overseas, you are 24, 25 years old. So you manage the baby, you manage your job, you break your bones. I bones hurt till this day because I've been working like that. So no matter what I become in life, I know what it's like to be alone at 24, 25, with a baby who's two days old. And I'll never forget that. And the last thing. I know this is temporary. Mm. Life itself? Life itself. Mm. Life itself, everybody knows. But nobody believes it. Till it's too late. So I know that everybody I love and many that I have loved will leave me either out of deceit or because they don't exist anymore. The issue is, can you forgive, forget and move on? So I have learned how to forget. Detachment. I think that's the core of this whole (laughs) conversation. (laughs) There is this one final question that I don't bring up on the podcast often, but I only bring it up for a few of my guests. It's a psychological test that a psychologist friend of mine told me about. I feel like you've already done this, so it may not even work. (laughs) Uh, But without thinking too much, like very fast, just name three animals. Three animals. Tiger, monkey and Scorpio. Scorpion. Are you a Scorpio? So this, I have no idea why I said Scorpio. I was thinking snake, which is right up my alley as a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to say now? Nope. Okay. According to that psychologist friend of mine, they say that when you name these three animals, the first animal is what you project yourself as. But I'm a monkey. <laughs> on the outside. Uh, the second is often how people might perceive you. Oh. Keeping in mind all the positives of the animals you've named. And Monkey the, is nothing positive. No, no, there is Tinkero. <laughs> Unless you're by Jarag Policy. Bali. Tinkero. The third one is your true nature on the inside. It's Yeah. <laughs> Which is what? Which Think is, or the Scorpio. Don't mess with me. Quiet Don't doing mess me. with any mother. <laughs> 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 it's not. It's not about, I think it's most women who are mothers don't verbalize it, but we are all the same. Mm. That's why I mean, I, I think one of my most surreal experiences when I was in the International Parliamentary Union, this is not again oft known about me. I was chosen as, um, I was elected from the Asia Pacific region for the Syrian crisis and drafting a resolution for it. And we were 10 women sitting, some was a defense minister, somebody was, you know, those kind of positions. Everybody had the same problem when it came from their personal experiences. So I think intrinsically women uh, all kind of align on certain issues, no matter who they are, where they're working. Mm. I think it's why you get so much support as well. It's a big part of the support you get. All the women. I've, I've never heard a lady say anything bad about you. Honestly, in party conversations and all. That's kind of them. I think they, they might because, have a different political opinion, but they'll always because every woman you. goes through the same route, mm. the same ruckus. Many of us don't verbalize it. Yeah. You know, the, if you notice, if you've seen conversations, right, you will see every time in a seminar with a female politician, I get one question asked every time. Ortu ke liye apke paas kya advice hai? <laughs> so if you notice it happens everywhere yeah. as if there is no recognition that by her very nature a woman knows exactly what she wants to do how she wants it done it's just that whether she has decided to do it or not boys it's good we didn't ask that question <laughs> no I'm kidding I'm kidding that's not but planned. it genuinely I, I feel and I say this uh, vehemently many a times there are times when you've tokoed me and said, ma'am, tera saal ke bachche dekh rahe. I'm like, get a dictionary. It does not matter. <laughs> because I remember once I got up in parliament and I'm a self-taught person. I got up in parliament. I was saying something. And then I said oxymoron. And 
and Venkaiah Naidu ji was on the chair as the vice president of India. He called me two hours later. He says, you know, I went back to my chambers, got the dictionary out and said, exactly, what did she say? <laughs> Oxymoron, was it offensive? I wanted to check. So I think that from a female perspective, I see all these things because I've been in the trenches. I've been poor. I've been disenfranchised. But I've always been emphatic about the need to fight back. So when you describe me, how I project my, I don't project myself as a tiger. Though people will perceive me as one because I have absolutely a no nonsensical approach to life. People tell me life is in the grey, not in the black. And I don't believe in all that. I don't live in the grey. I'm very clear. Black or white. Secondly, uh, do I said the monkey is, uh, you said is the tinkerer. The monkey is restless. So if psychologically you're testing me, then yes, there is a side of me which is restless because I once turned around and said, I have to do something in life. And this is after becoming a cabinet minister. And Zubin looked at me and said, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you done enough? I'm like, no, no, no. I want to do something. And third, when you said that, you know, this is a person not to, mess, to be messed with, Snake or the Scorpio. Uh, I totally agree. Also, scorpions live in tough environments and survive. Yeah, but uh, if you project it uh, in the Indian society, the way you're hoping to have an understanding of it, you will get a negative connotation for it. Mm. So yes, um, I'm not somebody that uh, you will have. I didn't get where I got by being walked all over on. Yeah, I think you took all the punches. I took, moving forward. And, but I always tell people, I say, you hit me once, I'll hit back. Mm. No? It, it has happened to me. As a, as a kid, it's happened. I got whacked by a guy, I whacked him twice. And he was just <laughs> looking at me. I said, what did you think? I was Abla Nari was going to just take a bus under from me. I've had, I've had yeah. my scars because of it. Not unexpected. <laughs> I think that is, how, you have one life, Ranveer. And I said this to my parents when I was 17 years old. It's my entire life, I'm going to live as your kid. Then I'm going to marry some guy. I'm going to live as his wife. Then I'll have babies. I'll be their mom. When do I live life for myself? I would rather live life on my terms, pay the cost for it. If the glory is, then it be mine. Than live in this state of helplessness. Most people get angry or bitter because they didn't take control of their life. So I will make mistakes. And I tell people, if anybody is watching right now, I would like them to know, you will make mistakes. You're human. Accept that responsibility. But you have one life. Live it on your terms. Know the cost to be paid for every decision. There is a cost. Let's not romanticize it. It's not going to be easy, especially if you've been poor. I've been poor in two cities. And I know of the kindness of strangers. I know of humiliation. If you've decided, there is nothing in the world you can't achieve. But it's a lot of hard work. Mm. My bones still creak. And they will creak to the day I die. But I will die with a straight spine. Mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Brate, no problem. <laughs> no, and seriously. there comes the... Oh. Proverbial son. <laughs> no, it's, it was a great conversation. Thank you. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be talking to you a lot more in the future. As Look I said forward to it. Yeah. Very, very happy to see you. I, this is not a part of the normal conversation. But let me just say this. And I hope you keep it because it's not. I have a 21 year old son. You're 29. You've done whatever you've done in life. You still managed to sort it all out. Emotionally. Emotionally, you have sorted out work, life, everything. And you're in the process of sorting out many other things. But you know what is good about it? That you're not myopic enough to know that you're Mr. Know-it-all. So you've gathered a huge audience. Always be true to them. Yes, ma'am. And the day you think that you can't do it anymore, leave. But... People believe in you. You know, the only thing that keeps me going as a politician or as a human being is that those who believe in me should feel that she did her best. 
and that's what i hope for you too thank you um means a lot uh i hate saying this cuz i'm i'm self promoting you but real la- <laughs> real recognize real everybody oh my god <laughs> <laughs> do well do thank well you. i thank hope you. for your mother sick do well that's what everything any mom wants that her kid does well i hope that's what i keep telling god that whatever i've done in life just make sure my kids are all right nothing else that's the only ambition i have thank you ma'am um want to talk to you again that's all i'll Look say forward to the and thank you for giving us so much time uh thank you for talking this way it says a lot about you especially with everything else that's going on <laughs> in your life you just paused and spoke to me so this meant the world thank, thank you. you thank you ma'am that was our two in one special of the ranvi show it was an absolute pleasure speaking to smriti ma'am because she understood the media side of the world uh i'd had a very open conversation with her i told her that it's very important for us to have that second half as a part of this episode because as a podcast i didn't feel like i brought out the human side well enough in the first part she was kind enough to oblige and that's what resulted in this epic two in one special i'm sure smriti ma'am is going to return on the show at the end of this episode all i want to say is that i learned a lot from this two part special and i'm getting better as a politics oriented podcaster though we're keeping it non political in these conversations once again a massive thanks to my gov india and trs is going to be back very soon with a lot more non political political conversations